Good afternoon, my dear students. Good to see you all again. We shall discuss the Hindu newspaper. I know that uh, a few of you have got examination on December 5, the IBPS clerical examination, but any of those things should not become a deterrent in doing the daily routines. So, without uh, too much of expatiation, I shall get to the analysis of the Hindu. Today, we shall discuss the Hindu date at December 2. The major news uh, headlines was uh, the GST inflows top 1 lakh crore for the second month in a row and the farmers continue to protest as no deal reached in talks with the government. We know that uh, for the past 8 days, farmers mostly from Punjab and Haryana are trying to march to Delhi who were and were prevented by the might of the police. Farmers are protesting against the recent laws enacted by the Indian parliament. The farmers fear that uh, laws are uh, almost equivalent to writing off their uh, future to the hands of the corporates. So, government is not listening to them, government has put conditions for discussion, but the farmers say that they would accept no conditions at all except complete withdrawal of all the three laws. So, we have to wait and see what are going to happen. Um, so, we shall go to the um, news items one by one. GST inflows top 1 lakh crore. This is this has come as a great relief to the government. Uh, the tax collections have been plummeting all these months. Um, thanks to COVID and thanks to subsequent uh, uh, closing down of business houses, the indirect tax collections were coming down like anything. Government had a huge tax uh, targets for the year. Government envisaged uh, eight lakh five thousand. Uh, so in the uh, two thousand nineteen twenty, government collected eight lakh five thousand one sixty four crore till uh, November, but in the year twenty twenty one, only sixty six lakh five thousand seven hundred four uh, seven hundred nine crore was collected, which is seventeen point four percent less than what collected during the same time last year. But government has got something to be happy about. In the last three months, September, October and November, there has been increase in taxation, tax collections. Uh, we know that in September, uh, the tax went up by 4 percent compared to previous year September, 2019 September. And in October, it went up by 10.5 percent compared to the previous uh, 2019 uh, September. And uh, in September, the tax collection for the first time in this year touched something, some figure more than 1 lakh crore. And uh, the same thing is repeated um, in, November, in, in, in November also, the tax collections were 1 lakh 4,963 crore which is 1.4 percent higher than a year ago. So, in the last three months, the tax collections, indirect tax collections have been more than the corresponding years of 2019, which is definitely a good sign. It, uh, the government says that it is a clear cut sign of recovery from the recessive phase that we are going through, but certain economists say that uh, this has been due to the pent up demand that was created during the uh, uh, owing to the shutdown of the economy. So, anyway, uh, things are not bleak for the government at the moment. Closely follow all these news and how the tax collections are moving, whether they are going to be favorable or unfavorable, whether there is something to be happy about or whether there is something to be concerned about, all these things have to be watched on a continuous basis. It is not something 
to be learnt in bits and pieces rather it must be a continuous flow. These figures how much has collected government has collected during November, September, October these month wise figures are irrelevant. But when you learn the figures over a period of time it gives you an idea. It gives you the idea now that if you followed uh, September figure, October figure and November figure now then you will get the idea. It becomes an idea that yes tax collections are going back to normalcy. But whether this will be sustained in the rest of the period of the financial year uh, is something that we all are curiously looking at. Farmers continue protests as no deal reached in talks with government. Listen, you have been reading this particular news item for a few days now and I have been explaining the same thing for the past few days. Now you should ask yourself, you are listening to it on a daily basis, what is the issue? What are the laws in question? Farmers are protesting against certain laws that the government came out with. So, what are the issues? Why the farmers are protesting? What are their concerns? Are you able to write say a few sentences on that? If you know it, you will be able to write. If you are not able to write, you do not know it. So, I have been speaking about the same thing for the past few days. Now, how many of you will say, how many of you know what the real issue is? Come on, respond to me. Please type. How many of you know what exactly the farmers issues are or why are they protesting? Come on, I am waiting for some of the responses. How many of you know? How many of you are confident to answer me? Hello. I will proceed only when I get a few responses. It cannot be a one man show. Excuse me, please respond. Can you give a suggestion to respond, ask requesting them to respond? Please respond, type. I am awaiting your response. How many of you know against farmers bill introduction of three new farm laws? Very good, Rahul, Nathan, good. Okay. What are their concerns? Okay, they know that it is against uh, the farm bills laws uh, uh, enacted by the parliament, but what are the concerns? What are the concerns? What are the what are the what contents of the bill that the farmers are against? Okay. One or two more responses are awaited. They are worried about the privatization taking place in agriculture sector. They are protesting against the new farm laws and a guarantee for MSP okay, lose their interest taking away MSP. Okay, that is Mandy's will also be gradually removed. These are their concerns. Okay, they are concerned that the Mandy's will be removed. They believe that in the days to come MSP will not be there. Third, they believe that guaranteed procurement of their produce may end. So, these are the concerns. Very good, very good, very good. Okay. I am happy to hear some of the responses. This enliven, this enlivens me very surely. Okay. Good, good, good. Thank you. So, I am proceeding. No move for universal vaccination. Listen, I told you many a days that uh, many a day I told you that uh, um, vaccination programs of India and the whole world are going to occupy a lot of space of newspapers of the days to come. It is going to be the biggest vaccination in the shortest possible time. So, everyone in India is looking whether there will be a universal vaccination, meaning vaccination for all the people. The government has clearly made, uh, made it very clear that vaccination will not be universal, rather vaccination will be done on a priority basis and through vaccination 
what the government plans to do is to break the chain of spread. Once that is achieved, then we need not vaccinate the rest of the population, so that the cost of vaccination can be reduced and the risk of vaccination can also be reduced. Whatever the foolproofness of uh, the vac vaccine be, there is a risk in vaccination. So, that also can be reduced if the vaccination can be prevented for a good population. So, what the government plans is not universal vaccination, rather vaccination to the priority people, people who are in the risky group and what government intends to do is to break the chain of spread by vaccinating the risk group so that the rest can be rest can go without vaccination so that's it i think i am very clear on what the government said very important regional priorities listen this has got reference to the hindu editorial has got reference to the recently concluded virtual shanghai cooperation organization summit we know that uh, uh, india <coughs> i'm sorry India, Pakistan, uh, China and Afghanistan and four uh, Central Asian Republics are members of SCO. There was a time when SCO was considered the, the Asian NATO, uh, Asian NATO, not Afghanistan, Russia, India, Russia, uh, uh, China and Pakistan and four Central Asian Republics. So, at, there was a time when people thought that it was going to develop itself as a an Asian NATO. We know about NATO, I told you the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, which is the biggest uh, security partnership in the world connecting western the west the connecting the west with the United States of America. So, similarly a, an Asian NATO was emerging that was the perception, but uh, India joined uh, uh, SEO a few years ago, nearly eight years ago, I believe, India joined uh, 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 three years ago, India uh, joined the eight nation Shanghai cooperation organization. Before that, we were having an observer status. Now, for the first time, India chaired the meeting, the first uh, uh, chairing of the intergovernmental or head of state meeting. Uh, uh, the Indian Prime Minister and Pakistan Prime Minister were conspicuous by their absence, for their absence. Uh, uh, it was because of the protocol mismatch that both of them did not participate. Um, Indian side was headed by the Vice President uh, Sri M. Venkaiah Nayadu. Uh, protocol mismatch means Indian Prime Minister is equivalent to Chinese President because in China, it is the president who heads the government. In Russia, it is the president who heads the government. But in India, it is the prime minister who heads the government, while the president of India is a figurative head or the head of the state. It is only a, uh, um, a nominal power, rather the real de facto power is with the prime minister. So, other countries like China and Russia are represented by the uh, non-equivalence of uh, the presidents. That is why Indian Prime Minister did not uh, participate in the meeting. So, there is another school of thought which says that uh, India slowly loses its interest in SCO. But anyway, these are the brief of uh, the editorial. Please read uh, uh, the within the SCO we have got concerns regarding terrorism from Pakistan and uh, the border issue with China. So, anyway, SEO has become a kind of a weak entity or it is getting weakened. That is what uh, uh, is the general perception. Slow progress. World Health Organization must work alongside China in quickly uncovering the origins of the virus. The article, the editorial says that uh, in the previous incidences of uh, uh, virus outbreaks, WHO could locate the origin of virus in very quickly, but even after 11 months of its origin in Wuhan in China, uh, uh, WHO is searching in the dark and is not able to 
pinpoint the origin of virus whether it was manufactured in the lab or whether it was just an accident or if it is a, a deliberate attempt to weaken the world. So, um, there are different uh, uh, theses that are spreading and WHO must be able to work along with China and pinpoint where exactly and when exactly this virus that shook the world started spreading. So, that is the essence of the article please read. We know that this particular virus spread has got plenty of political connotations. If you take one single incident that affected the result of uh, the American presidential election, it is said that it is coronavirus. So, it has got political, it had political ramifications also apart from the uh, financial collapse that the world has witnessed, it will draw millions of population under abject, abject poverty. It has already affected poverty elevation programs of many world, many countries including that of including India, that of India. So, anyway what I am saying is that this article asks WHO to uh, speed up its activities to identify the source of virus, the coronavirus. Why business barons should not run banks? This has got connotation with uh, the internal working group of the Reserve Bank of India's recommendation to allow corporates to own banks. So far, the Reserve Bank of India has been or has not allowed the corporates to own banks. Banks are occupying a very special position in uh, 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 the economic sector of the country. You can have, you can privatize oil sector, you can privatize um, uh, mining, you can privatize X, Y, Z. But when it comes to education, when it comes to um, health, health care, when it comes to banking, strong government presence is required. That is the history of this country. So, what government uh, uh, thinks or the Reserve Bank of India think tank thinks seems to be out of place that is what the article says. Uh, uh, and uh, the article starts with a beautiful thing. First, a confession is in order. Would I want to own a bank and have a key to the bank treasury to start a new airline? That is the opening question. Seems to be really good. That first sentence itself conveys the idea. So, please read a good article. Winners who disappoint. Giving uh, uh, this, uh, this write up criticizes the Nobel Prize Committee's decision to honor the Ethiopian president with the Nobel Prize. It is risky that uh, 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 prestigious awards are given to people uh, who occupy political positions because uh, their ambitions may change. In the instant case, uh, uh, Abi Ahmed of Ethiopia, the president of Ethiopia, the prime minister of Ethiopia, Abi Ahmed was given Nobel Prize in 2018. He was given the Nobel Peace Prize for stopping the war with the neighboring Eritrea. Eritrea and Ethiopia had been in the war for long, long time. And when Abi Muhammad became the prime minister in, prime minister, he, in 2017, uh, he took immediate actions to stop the war between Eritrea and uh, to honor the, his efforts, the Nobel Peace Committee gave him the Nobel Peace Prize for the year 2019. But in 2020 situations got changed. Now, he has sent his own army, the Ethiopian army to the Tigris, the northern Ethiopian region of Tigris region, Tigris province. So, now what is going to happen? The peacemaker who was awarded with the highest 
peace prize of the world is now making war with his own people. This question was raised when Bharadaratna was given to uh, uh, young people, very young people. When Bharadaratna is given to very young people, there is a, there is a, uh, a real trouble which was cited by many people. When Bharadaratna was given to even Sachin Tendulkar, one school of thought said, of course, we all understand the contribution given by Sachin Tendulkar to the world of sport. He is not just a sports personality, he is an iconic figure in India, he is a god of cricket, people love him. Anybody, uh, 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 any mother in India would love to have a son of his kind. Uh, uh, either you or I would prefer to him as our brother. Um, uh, any coach in India would uh, uh, love to have a person of such and kind under his tutelage. But giving him Bharadaratna, honoring him with Bharadaratna was criticized by many, not for the lack of contribution from Sachin, but at the age of 44, he was given, 42 I think, he was given Bharadaratna. And you see, uh, uh, it is a risky stuff. The highest civilian honor of the country is given to a young person. That is always risky. The similar risk is cited in this, uh, uh, in this article also, when Nobel Peace Prize was given to people who occupy positions in the government and that to at a young age. And in this article, it speaks about uh, the award given to Aung San Suu Kyi of uh, Myanmar. Aung San Suu Kyi was uh, given Nobel Prize. Uh, he was uh, the fighter uh, who brought freedom to, brought democracy to um, um, uh, uh, Myanmar. But she last year supported the military action against Rohingya refugees. In the International Court of Justice, The Hague, she supported, she defended the military action in uh, uh, um, um, the Rohingya refugees case. So, that was also a, uh, uh, many eyebrows were raised when she took a stand of that kind. So, it is always risky, they are risky that the article says that it is always risky to provide, to, to honor people with Nobel Peace Prize or price of very high honor to people who occupy in powerful positions. I request all my friends to subscribe to our social media channels. Uh, uh, so, I request uh, uh, all of you uh, to subscribe to our YouTube and other social media channels. That will be a great encouragement. I request all of you to post your um, open suggestions, uh, positive comments against uh, our uploads. Okay, I am moving ahead. So, China Pakistan side military deal, it is going to be important. It is going to be important from uh, the even the from the examination point of view. Uh, so, China and Pakistan are uh, um, uh, you know uh, have signed a military relationship uh, uh, agreement. And uh, in my notes also, I gave you the title of that agreement. I am not able to locate it now. But anyway, this is going to be very, very important. Uh, with which neighboring country has um, of India that China has uh, entered into a military deal that uh, uh, that uh, uh, came up. Um, I gave it in the in the <coughs> um, uh, news uh, yesterday's news quiz. So please go through; it's very important. The purchasing managers index. Listen for one of the examinations. I remember they asked what is PMI. It is purchasing managers index. Purchasing managers index of India's manufacturing touched 56.3 in November signaling that even as an improvement in wider industrial activity continued, 
the sector's expansion as well as the pace of new orders slowed down, while employment declined further as a business optimism faded during the month. So, so uh, what is this PMI? You should know this is purchasing managers index. These sort of indices give indications on how the economy performs. I have got a question. So, you missed to explain one news item before China Pakistan military deal news. Okay, let me see whether I missed out anything. Oh, okay, good, good that uh, somebody noticed. Okay, Reshma, thank you. Uh, many violations in Chardam project. Chardam project. Uh, this also I asked in my news quizzes today. Um, um, environmentalists have alleged that contractors deputed by the government to make roads as a part of the pilgrim project, Chardam, Chardam project, violating the Supreme Court orders on the appropriate road, road width to be followed in mountainous terrain. It is a 12,000 crore project aims at constructing wider road spanning 825 kilometers connecting key pilgrim sports in Uttarakhand. Okay. So, where is Saddam project? It is a 12,000 crore project connecting pilgrim centers in Uttarakhand. Good that uh, somebody, uh, uh, okay. uh, somebody uh, Reshma. Okay, thank you. Uh, Notice. As let me proceed. November power consumption growth slows. Listen, uh, economic performance of the country are uh, uh, performance is uh, uh, indicated by the consumption of power, consumption of diesel, consumption of cement, consumption of steel, etcetera, etcetera. These are the core sectors of the economy. So, power consumption went down uh, by 4.7 percent. That shows that we have nothing to be exuberant about. So, uh, GST has been going up. Government is very happy about GST. Government says that the GST increase indicates that the economy is back on track, but on the other hand, economists say that that is not the case. The GST growth could be because of the pent up demand that was created in the economy thanks to slowdown, but the real indicators are lower consumption of electricity, diesel consumption uh, came down by 7 percent. Uh, these are major indicators. The, the construction sector is also doing very badly. Cement consumption went down. Uh, steel consumption went down. It may be going up when compared to the first or second quarter, which were severely damaged by COVID, but when compared to corresponding months of previous years, they have declined, which is not at all a good sign for the economy. Paytm waves charges on merchant transactions, very important. We are digitizing our economy. So, when we go for digitizing the economy, we have to ensure that cost of transactions both to customers as well as merchant organizations are very much within limit. So, this is a great sign Paytm has decided that they will not charge uh, uh, anybody for uh, accepting payment from Paytm wallet, uh, UP apps or rupee cards uh, and they will zero charge. So, that is a great relief to business houses, merchant houses. So, that can also come as your as a question to you. Thank you very much for uh, watching the day's program. Um, I have a few um, questions from you. Of course, we have to make it in the days to come more interactive, uh, so that uh, that will energize me, that will uh, be a challenge to me. I would like that challenge. So, please ask questions to me. I will also ask you questions. Uh, uh, for it to become a really interactive session, you must ensure that you read the newspapers before you turn up for the program. I once again request all the students to make comments to our YouTube channel against this program, so that uh, 
uh, more participants will come and when more participants, participants come, uh, peer learning will also help us. So, I once again thank you all for being with me at 3 o'clock I shall come again with a topic on with a few questions on quantitative aptitude. Thank you very much have a very good day ahead.